Hi, my name is Dr. Denise, and on this video um, we are going to talk about using the PR interval and the QT interval to help identify waves on ECGs. So, waves on ECGs are not that difficult to identify once you get familiarized with their format and morphology. The first wave we have is the P wave followed by the QRS complex and the T wave. However, in some circumstances, we might have ECGs where P's and T waves look quite similar. And they might not be easy, might not be easy to identify them in a given trace. So like in this case, it's unclear if these waves are P waves or T waves. And some of the hypotheses here are that the T wave might be overlapping with the P wave, or maybe I, the case don't, does not have a P wave, or we don't see a T wave. In, in, so in cases, in situations like this, using the PR interval and the QT interval properties will help you to identify which wave are we seeing here. We are seeing here. So first, let's talk about the PR interval. What is it? What is it? It's basically the time that takes for the depolarization to leave the SA node, travel through the myocardium, and reach the AV node, and be conducted through the AV node before it's sent to the ventricles by the fast conduction system of the heart. So it's like in this diagram, the time it takes for the basketball to be passed from the SA node to the AV node including the time that the AV node holds that ball before it sends to the ventricles. So the PR interval is characterized by the beginning of the P wave all the way to the beginning of the QRS complex. Even though we call it PR interval, actually we are measuring the PQ interval. And PR intervals are very frequent, very constant among every single complex in an ECG. So with very few exceptions, the distance, the measurements of a PR interval should not significantly change from beat to beat. There are few exceptions, but the rule of thumb is that if you measure the beginning, if you measure the PR interval in one complex, and you look in the next one on your ECG trace, it should be very close. So there are no such a thing as dramatic changes in the PR interval with exception of some few AV block disease or AV diseases such as AV blocks. The QT interval, it's defined by the time that it takes from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. And this period of time is basically the time that takes for the cells to depolarize and repolarize. So the QT interval shows you how long ventricular cells, in this case, how long it takes for them to depolarize and repolarize. Therefore, there it's no way you can cause dramatic changes in the time that it takes for the cells to depolarize and repolarize. Therefore, it's impossible to have dramatic changes in the QT interval from beat to beat. This image shows that Eventually, if you have an increase in the repolarization phase of cardiac cells, you have a prolonged QT interval. And this happens in some diseases or with some medications. However, my point here is that you will not see in a dog or cat drastic changes in the PR interval from one beat to the next beat. So both PR interval and QT interval tend to be constant. Now let's revisit that ECG that we were confused about, it, about the waves that we were seeing. While it's very easy 
to identify QRS complexes, P's and T waves here are somewhat difficult to identify. So let's get some color here and let's see that if these guys here, these waves here are P waves, then the PR interval should be somewhere between here and here. But as you can see, the next one, it's much longer. And this, the next one is shorter again. And let's see, this one is somewhat in between. So the changes in the, if this is a P wave, if this was a P wave, then we will not see these dramatic changes in the PR interval. On the other hand, if these are T waves, then the QT, the QT interval will be this distance right here. Let's see, the next one will be somewhere here, and the next one will be somewhere here. So as you can see, in this example, the QT, the QT interval, it's much more constant than if these were P waves. So in conclusion, what you're seeing here actually are T waves, and in this specific example, there are no P waves. So keep in mind that using the PR interval and the QT interval will help you to identify based in comparing each complex, comparing each PR interval and every QT interval that you, that you have in your ECG, you help you identify and differentiate these two waves. I hope this is helpful, so see you next time.